My name is Fernando and I work for DCS or Diesel Control Service. I'm a specialist in Detroit Diesel, Cummins, and Caterpillar ECMs. I've programmed them, I've repaired them, and I've done lots of diagnostics. All modern engines are computer controlled. Fuel mileage and performance starts right here. If this isn't performing, your engine isn't going to either. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what I've got going on here. I'm going to bring this DDEC4 to 600 RPM right here on this bench. When you send me your ECM, from a control standpoint, I can bring your engine to life. I can listen to the timing, I can look at pulse width, I can look at any control system, the fan driver, and I can replicate whatever condition it is that's causing you a problem. The method that most companies use for testing an ECM, a programming harness. Right now, I'm just simulating that basic harness. So, I have communication and five check engine lights. That's a bunch of crap. There's 81 circuits in here. So far, I've tested eight. So, what about the rest? We don't know. Jakes, injectors, the entire engine side, everything on the OEM side besides the one JCOM and uh, the ignition circuit and power, any one of those could have a problem right now and there'd be no way for me to detect that. All right, let's say your fan's running all the time, just like this one is. And this was after you just put on a reman ECM and you think, well, maybe I got a bad fan clutch, or maybe I've got some air leaking somewhere, it's not building enough pressure, maybe I've got a bad fan solenoid. Well, could be the ECM too. ECM supplying ground now. The fan shuts off. We know this one's okay, but I couldn't do it with a programming harness. So unless you had everything hooked up and test it, you can't be sure. You're assuming. If you have a perfectly healthy engine or a perfectly healthy truck, that's the best way. That's better than doing it this way. If you're sure your truck's perfect, if you're sure your engine's perfect. If it's not, you've just invited a whole lot of other variables to the test. So now you don't know. Is it the truck? Is it the engine? Is it the ECM? What's out of here right now? I've seen a lot of weird stuff. I've seen so much weird stuff, it's not even weird anymore. So don't assume that because the ECM is straight from the factory and it's reman, that it doesn't have a fault in it. I've seen that mistake a lot. People say, well, I just got this. It's a new ECM. Usually when everyone's tired of looking everywhere else, that's what it ends up being. When you first call up a company that does ECM repairs or ECM tuning, ask them how they tell that their job was successful. Do they test the ECM as it comes in and then they identify the problem and then correct that? 
and then test afterwards to make sure that their correction did what they were supposed to do? Or do they just assume and then they just send it to you and offer you a good warranty? Warranties are easy to fulfill, they're cheap to fulfill for the company, not for you. For you, might be fuel mileage, might be downtime, missing loads, and nobody is going to pay for that except for you. So I believe there's a lot of value in getting it right the first time, and the best warranty is one you never have to use. When you send me your ECM for programming work or repair or anything along those lines, the first thing I do is I put it on the tester. I take it straight out of the box. I'll clean it up if it's dirty. I'd appreciate it to clean a little oil off of it, but that's okay. I have a parts cleaner for that. I put it straight on the tester. What I want to do is I want to find out why you sent it to me. I want to see if I see what you're seeing, whether it's poor performance, bad timing, misfires, whether the fan's running all the time. I want to see what you see. And once I see that, I know what I need to do. Then I back up your program. I store it, and then I get to work. After I've taken measures to correct whatever problem you sent the ECM in for, I do another test. I see if that problem is gone, and I can run through all systems to make sure there's nothing else that aggravates that problem. I still offer a warranty just like everybody else, but I made all this because after I'm done with the job, I want you to use this ECM to drive off into the sunset and go make money, and I don't want to see this ECM again. Now, if you send me an ECM that I had worked on in the past, and you want a program changed, say you want it adapted to a different truck, that's no big deal. If you're going from D-Deck 4 to D-Deck 3, or D-Deck 3 to D-Deck 4, I can take care of that for you. Um, if you decide you want to sell the truck and you want to revert it back to stock for some reason, I have that on file. If you want to uh, put a driver on your truck and detune it, I can do that too. And if you need anything else, give me a call. If you want me to take a look at your ECM, you can send that in and I'll put it right on this. If there's any questions as to what's going on, I can even show you a video of what it is. I don't know how well you can see this, but what we have going on here is an ATEM 3 driving a set of Series 60 injectors. You notice the LEDs are pretty dim and you can barely hear the click of the solenoids. Now the Caterpillar uses a high voltage pulse compared to the Series 60 which is uh, you know about 12 volts this is about 120 but these solenoids don't respond very well to the ATEM 3 there's some manipulation you could do to the wave to make it work, but these two really aren't meant to play together. However, those right there, well, any Ford Power Stroke guys out there are probably going to know what's going to happen. But now I've heard for years, being a 7.3 owner myself, that there's a great deal of Caterpillar influence when the development of DT444 began and uh, well let's see for yourself
Sounds pretty good to me.